In this video, we're going to talk about the uniform probability distribution. We're going to learn how to cal calculate the expected value, variance, standard deviation, as well as solve practice problems. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the uniform probability distribution gets its name from the fact that all the probabilities for all of the outcomes are the same. So anytime you have a situation in which every outcome in the sample space is equally likely, you will use a uniform distribution. Now, importantly, a uniform distribution is a continuous probability model, which means that the probability underneath the curve, or in this case, the rectangle, is equal to one. Okay, so when you have a uniform probability distribution, you will always have a rectangle and the area underneath that rectangle will always be equal to one. And what do we remember from basic kind of geometry? The area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. So in the sense a, of a uniform distribution, length times width will equal one for our uniform probability model. So here's our uniform probability model. This is, this is what it looks like. So we have our variable x on our x-axis and we have some function of x on our y-axis so and otherwise the height of the rectangle. And we calculate that by taking one over b minus a, where we have some value for b and some value for a. But there's a condition. If a is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b meaning that X must occur somewhere between A and B. Otherwise, the probability that X occurs is equal to zero. So if X is greater than B occurs somewhere out here, the probability that X occurs is equal to zero. And if X occurs less than A, the probability is also equal to zero. So let's talk about some of the summaries of the uniform models and let's start with calculating our expected value. So our expected value is simply equal to a plus b divided by two. In other words, the expected value is going to be exactly halfway between a and b. So if we have our uniform probability model looking or probability distribution looking like this, a and b, our expected value is going to be exactly halfway between a and b. And otherwise, 50% of the observations will occur above the expected value and 50% of the observations will occur below the expected value. Our variance is equal to B minus A squared divided by 12. And our standard deviation of a uniform model is equal to the square root of B minus A squared divided by 12. Now I wanna highlight one more thing and that is this instance where we're looking for a values of that the probability that X occurs between C and D. So let's just imagine that it, what we're wanting to find the probability that X occurs in this region between values C and D. Well, it's the probability that C is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to D is equal to D minus C divided by B minus A. So let's go ahead and do some practice problems. So, a random variable x is known to be uniformly distributed between 10 and 15. So, first show the graph of the function, show the graph of the probability density function. So, we can do that. So, our graph is going to look something like this. We know it's going to look like a rectangle because we have a uniform, uh, dis a uniform distribution between the values of 10 and 15. So, a is equal to 10 and B is equal to 15. So we can just put this on our axis here, values of 10 and 15. We can label our X and Y, so this is X and this is Y, or our function of X more astutely. And then we need to calculate the density function. So our function of X is equal to one over B minus A, in this case, it's equal to one over 15 minus 10, which is equal to one over five, which is equal to 0 0.2. And otherwise known, if we wanna make this make sense, our height here 
is 0 0.2, and we'll just continue with our label here, our function of x. Now, if we want to check to make sure that we have the right um, kind of width of our rectangle, remembering that length times width is equal to 1 in the case of a uniform probability distribution, well, if we have uh, a length of 5, that's the difference between 10 and 15, times 0 0.2, this is equal to 1. So that the area underneath the curve, in this case, the curve is just equal to a rectangle, is equal to 1. So there we have it. We have completed A. For B, we're asked to calculate the expected value. Well, this is just equal to A plus B divided by 2 where a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 15. So we get 10 plus 15 divided by 2, which is equal to 12.5. Now, interestingly, if we go up to this little graph that we've created, what do we notice here? Well, 12.5 is exactly halfway between 10 and 15, and otherwise, 50% of our observations are going to observe above 12.5 and 50% of our observations are going to fall below 12.5. We're then asked to compute the standard deviation in C. So the standard deviation is equal to the square root of B minus A squared divided by 12. So the square root of 15 minus 10 squared divided by 12. So this is equal to the square root of 5 squared divided by 12, which is equal to the square root of 25 divided by 12. which is equal to 1.4434. So we've now completed C. Now D is an interesting one. So D, compute the probability that X is equal to 11.25. Well, the probability that X is equal to 11.25 is actually equal to zero. And that's because in a, un in a continuous probability model, the probability that X is exactly a discrete value is always equal to zero, okay? And that's because when we look at this, effectively we're taking a very, very small sliver, let me do it in a different color here, a very small sliver, of our model and effectively there is no length to that so the area underneath the curve is equal to zero so the probability that x is exactly a identified value in a continuous probability model is equal to zero <clears throat> so let's continue on compute the probability that 11 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 12.25 so let's just do this um, right here so e the probability that 11 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 12.25. So what does this really represent? And let's just kind of clear our playing field a little bit. Effectively, what this is asking, if we say that this is equal to 11, 11.0, and we'll just call this 12.25, Five, we're asked what is the probability that x falls in this green shaded region well this is equal to the probability of d minus c divided by b minus a so the probability that 11.0 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 12.25 is equal to 12.25 Two five minus eleven point zero divided by fifteen minus ten. So twelve point two five minus eleven is equal to one point two five. Fifteen minus ten is equal to five. 
So 1.25 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.25. In other words, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 11 and less than or equal to 12 is equal to 0 0.25. And then finally for f, the probability that c is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to d, is equal to d minus c divided by b minus a. So the probability that 11.2 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 14.5, is equal to 14.5 minus 11.2 divided by 15 minus 10. So 14.5 minus 11.2 gives us 3.3 .3 divided by 5, which is equal to 0 0.66. So just to refresh, what does this mean, like in terms of what did we solve for here in F? So we draw our uniform distribution. We had some value of A of 10 and B of 15. And we were given other values of C and D, which we said was 11.2 and 14.5. The scale doesn't really matter here. We're just looking it up. And what we were asking is what is the probability that X falls in this shaded region and that is exactly what we calculated right here. So the probability that X is in that shaded region is equal to 0 0.66. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.